is using reference picture cheating? Should you use picture reference or video reference? Is it cheating to use multiple pictures? Is it cheating to paint on a reference picture? Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is David Bilivo. I'm the lead instructor at Paintable and in this video I'll be talking about the risks and pitfall beginner users will face when using or not using reference pictures for their art, drawings, painting, you name it. And I'll do so by answering a few common questions that I receive from my students on an everyday basis. All right, question number one is using reference picture cheating. Well, the short answer for this is no. Using reference pictures is not cheating in any way. Let me be very clear about this. It doesn't make you a fraud either. I know as beginner artists, we tend to feel like frauds when we start because we're using a lot of different reference pictures or tools. No matter where is your level, reference pictures are needed, no matter if you are a beginner or a professional. Matter of fact, lots of professional artists are using reference picture to create professional art, some artists will do their own photo shoot to create the models that they need and then basically use that to create their art pieces. Matter of fact, one of my favorite artists on Instagram called Chris Guest does that exactly. When you look at his Instagram, what you can see is that he has a few times posted the picture and the reference side by side. And so you can see the reference picture right there and how he shot, shot it and then the work that he's been doing. And he's obviously doing something that is very stylized from it. But if you look at this, you can see that he's a professional artist, very popular, uh, based in London. And that's basically what he does. He takes a picture and then he does a uh, stylized painting from it. So that is the proof. This is, this is in no way cheating, professional approved. So matter of fact, it is not cheating and it's actually essential for a beginner to use reference picture to actually progress faster. And so the risk or pitfall that you could actually have for this kind of question, thinking that reference pictures are cheating and all of that, is that you're not using them and that you start trying to do stuff from imagination. And the problem is, if you are a beginner, this is going to slow you down and bring a lot of frustration along the way. So take my advice for it, definitely use reference picture if you're a beginner, and then later on when you have a library in your head of reference picture that you will already have practice, you'll be able eventually to paint from imagination. All right, question number two is, should you use picture reference or video reference? And the answer to this is both are great, but they don't serve the same purpose. If you are trying to paint something or a, a scene that has a lot of action, something like a boxing match, for example, maybe looking at video footage will give you actually better reference. And the reason for this is because when you are staging a punch, you will probably look a little stiff. It's really hard to actually transfer the energy that you would have in an action pause by having the pose, is it pose or pause? <laughs> Never been able to say this one. But basically you won't be able to transfer the energy within the picture. So if you're doing a video, the chances are that it's going to show the movement or the both characters being in the action together. Now, with that being said, you can definitely find actually a reference picture that looks stiff and reference picture that actually uh, depict great action. And there's plenty of example of this. If you're looking at professional boxing photography, for example, you'll see the two boxers in the action and the photographer basically just take the shot at the right moment and they both look in the action. So whenever you choose a picture for a depicting a scene that has action, just ask yourself, does it look like it's real or does it look static? And if it looks static, maybe look for something else or look for video footage to help you with it. Now that being said, video footage is great for action pauses, but if you want to do a portrait, for example, a picture will be much better than a video. You'll be able to see a lot more details for it. So this is why I'm saying video and pictures are both great ways to actually learn or have reference to to learn how to paint something, it just depends on what is your subject that you're trying to paint. So just ask yourself before looking for reference, are you looking for something that has an action pause or is something that's a bit more static? And from there, you'll be able to choose the right reference for you. Another question that I have a lot is, is it cheating to use multiple pictures and basically making a collage or montage to create a unique reference? And once again, 
No, it is not cheating. And actually it's a great way to find unique ideas for your painting. If you're looking at Pinterest, for example, and you make a quick research on photo collages, photo montage, those kind of things, you're gonna have a ton of ideas that you'll be able to see from there. Amazing artwork that's been done by other artists with only pictures, right? Not even like illustration. But there's a lot of illustrators that actually do this. They will basically have a few reference pictures and create unique pieces with them. It's just a great way to have great pieces that are unique. And one of my favorite artists for this, I'm not gonna try to pronounce his name, uh, he's Turkish, but anyhow, he's one of my favorite artists when it comes to this. Uh, his Instagram is amazing. And when you look at his art, you can actually, if you're doing a quick research online, see that the pieces that he does is really, he takes a reference picture from a portrait, for example, and then mix it up with another reference picture and basically does a collage in his head to create his composition. And his work is amazing, so I'll make sure to put a link so you can actually get inspired by him. There's a lot of artists like him online, but I feel like this one is really, really special to me. So if you want something with a lot of inspiration for this kind of reference picture, definitely go check him out. Uh, this is really just very unique. Now the risks and pitfall of these kind of reference picture is that if you do this as a beginner, you might need a few more skills to actually get to the kind of level that I just showed you. So if you want to have the colors and lighting and perspective to all commit to the same composition, you will need to know those things. The reference itself won't be enough for you to create that perfect image uh, with the right colors and lighting. So don't get frustrated right away. You can definitely try that and have some fun with it. But if you want something that's very coherent with the composition that you're doing, then you might need a little bit more than just a reference picture. But in all cases, it's no cheating. All right, another question that I receive a lot is, is it cheating to actually paint on a reference picture? No matter if it's to explore more ideas or to do an actual painting, but starting with a picture. And once again, it's in no way cheating. You just need to know what you want to do from it. If you want to be the kind of artist that takes some pictures and then paint over it, why not? If you're the kind of artist that wants to find reference picture all over the web, do a little sketch on it to find the ideas from it, to create a painting that is unique from it, why not? At the end of the day, you are the artist and you decide. Here's what I like to do usually, is when I take a picture reference, I like to do a quick sketch on it sometimes to just see if I can explore different ideas from that reference picture. I'm not the kind of artist that's gonna take my own picture and then create a total final piece from it, but I saw that before and it's in no way cheating. It's just another way to create basically. But the risk and pitfall here is if you are using reference online that you don't own the rights, then you cannot make final pieces from them. You can definitely take a picture, do a quick sketch on it, find a new idea and then create a unique piece out of it. That's perfect. Incredible. But if you are not the owner of the picture, you won't be able to use that picture as is, plus putting your sketch on it and declare that as being your work. So just be careful of this, because if you do this, you might encounter some problem down the line. Now, another question that a lot of people will ask is, what could be considered a good and bad reference picture? Or plain and simple, how do I choose the best reference picture for my illustration? So if that's a question that you would like to know the answer, I made a video about it. I'll put it right here. All you have to do is click on there and in there, I'll give you my best tips and tricks on how to choose the best reference picture for your illustration. I'll see you in there. Mm -hmm. Can you hear that?